evening and welcome to the NDTV Dialogues, a conversation of ideas. This week, perhaps our biggest focus has been on one of the pillars of our democracy, the judiciary and the clashes within. What exactly is the way forward? What are the real core issues that have been raised and how do they need to be addressed? What are the different perspectives on this? Joining me is a very distinguished panel. I'm joined by Justice Vikramjeet Sen, former judge of the Supreme Court, also former Chief Justice of the Karnataka High Court and very senior jurist. Thank you so much, Justice Sen, for coming in. I'm also joined by Justice Santosh Hegde, again a former judge of the Supreme Court, former Karnataka Lok Ayukt as well. Justice Hegde joining me. I'm also joined by Indra Jai Singh, uh, uh, formerly an additional solicitor, uh, additional solicitor General, also of course a senior advocate of the Supreme Court. Also with me, Nalin Kohli, now additional advocate general and an advocate of the Supreme Court. Thank you all very much for being here. Justice Sen, in your view, when we talk of this unprecedented clash within the judiciary, how would you look at what are the larger issues that have been raised? Was this the right way to go about it? And how do we resolve this going forward? Uh, I've Even on your channel, I've uh, noticed that they, the four have been categorized as rebel judges. Uh, and of course, that's the, that's the epithet which is used all over by most channels. I don't really think think that that's a fair categorization. They are part, they are, they are four of the collegium. And there have been a lot of administrative responsibilities which have been placed on the collegium. Mm -hmm. uh, if you see the genesis of, of this institution, I think it was very clear that they thought that the Chief Justice on his own if he could take all, so all decisions, it may lead to some arbitrariness. Uh, so having said that, they are, as I perceive it, as I see it, and they are doing now what is expected of them. They have a view which is different to what the Chief Justice has, it, it, it appears. Now, a lot has been said that there are political overtones. I don't see political overtones in it, and people who are better uh, informed may see it. So mm -hmm. I don't want to say anything on that. Uh, so the, the Chief Justice is there. These four are also doing their job. What is the way forward? Uh, I think, of course, everybody says it should not have happened. I also say it should not have happened. It, it, it has. Uh, put the judiciary in the limelight. But then what, what is so, so terrible about being in the limelight? If we want transparency, why should it not exist in, in all spheres of, of our life? Uh, so the way forward, I think the way forward is, if you ask me, there should be a requiem uh, where we, we end this, uh, uh, this controversy. The issue has been raised. I think it will be sorted out and it seems that it is already sorted out because of one particular order which we will come to later, which is probably the genesis, which seems to be the genesis of it. I do not believe that it is just a one-off, uh, uh, just one issue prompted this. I think it must have been going on for some time. There may have been, there must have been differences within the collegium mm -hmm. and uh, four of them, all of whom have been chief justices in several different courts of India who, have, who know how the chief justice functions, who are responsible for the high courts, how they function, and now the Supreme Court of India. They must know, they must have, they must have found this to be the last resort. So, uh, Justice Sen, when you actually watch them as well, again, as you as an ex-chief justice, as part of one of the most senior judges of this country, what was your first reaction? Did you think in the sense, did you think this was a historic moment in a sense? And when you heard their words saying democracy is at stake, that's why we decided to come out. We didn't want people to say 20 years later that we sold our souls. How important do you think this is a moment for the judiciary to look at cleansing itself as well as re-looking at the whole issue of appointments of, ju of judges? Well, I don't know whether appointments is in this issue, whether that was one of the uh, differences which led to this is not really clear from what they said. Uh, I think it was the, uh, the marking and the apportioning of, of, uh, of cases 
uh, at least that's what is that's what we are given to believe. I'm not privy to what has happened within the collegium, mm -hmm. and I'm again saying it's the collegium which is working. There may have been other things, but but you know so much is said about being the master of the roster. We've all fixed rosters. We know how it is, how work is uh, distributed. Once it is done, then everybody knows that this category of cases will go to so and so. And if, for good reason, uh, uh, somebody on that particular bench thinks it's appropriate for him to recuse, then it will go back to the Chief Justice. Now, that is the, the case which goes a little out of the the, the uh, stream of the roster. So as an informed observer, did you think there seemed to be something wrong? Was there bench fixing as it's been called? I don't know whether there was bench fixing. Uh, You're now looking at cricket as well, so you know the term in terms of match <laughs> fixing and bench fixing. I, as I hope there's no, no match fixing <laughs> now, no, at least course. as far as the DDC is concerned. I think there will not be. But was there, be that's what the perception is, I don't know. I will have to look into all those uh, those issues. Mm -hmm. My reaction is that nobody can be uh, 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 can there should not be so much power reposed in any one individual. That is why the whole collegium was formed. Mm -hmm. It has worked well. Nobody has said do away with the collegium. None of the parties have said do away with the collegium. They are saying no. The government must also have a say in the appointment of judges. So it's a different issue. True, but I, I'm saying has it now opened, in fact, that way a Pandora's mm. box in a sense on the issues that will be addressed going ahead. I just wanted to bring in Justice Hegde on this as well. Justice Hegde, again, as an informed observer, when you perhaps put on a television set and watched those four judges, again, the four senior most judges in India after the Chief Justice of India, four of the five of the Collegium, what was your reaction then and now, given what's happened in the days afterwards, what would you say today needs to be done going ahead and for also for, in a sense, resolving these issues within the judiciary. I felt ashamed. I feel, even today, I feel ashamed having been a judge of the Supreme Court. It never had happened in the history of the Supreme Court. In regard to executive, there is a disciplinary rule which says you shall not go to the media. There is no such rule in regard to the judges, but that means the judges are supposed to be more cautious even than the disciplinary rules that the executive have and all. This for the first time it has happened in the history of uh, the Supreme Court in this country. Now look at the consequences. Now every Tom, Dick and Harry will start suggesting what the Supreme Court should do. As you have noticed already, the Bar Association, the Supreme Court Bar Association has sent certain suggestions what the Chief Justice should do. The Bar Council of India has sent some suggestions. There have been meetings of the political parties discussing this issue. It is they open. It is, everybody can now criticize or support whatever it is. But in the bargain, the reputation of the institution has really come down. It is a sad day for judiciary. There is a saying that judges should not be heard talking outside the court hall and all. But everything has been destroyed now. You come out and make allegations. What was the purpose? Mm -hmm. Why was this publication? Uh, Who could have helped that uh, solve the problem? Could the government have done it? No. Could the people have done it? No. Could, can the media do it? No. It is just passing on information which is otherwise should not go to the public domain. But the, when just things happen, idea, what would have been the other? What would have been the other options? And I'll just bring back the rest of the panel. What would have been the other options if they felt that the Chief Justice was not addressing this issue? What would have been the other option for these four uh, judges? There are many differences of issues, which are, difference of opinion are there within the members of the Collegium or including the whole of the um, Supreme Court. But that is not to be brought to the public domain. They could have uh, discreetly gone to the President and explained to the uh, President what's happening, which according to them is something wrong and all. But you can't go to the press. What Are you saying, I've been telling the people of India, you tell us what should we do? You are giving an oppor opportunity to uh, criticize the institution. Now, look, the, it has set a precedent now. Now, in every court, in the high court also, that there are differences of opinion. The one person agreed can go to the media. Right. And criticize the thing, what's happening in the thing. I just want to quickly get, uh, I just quickly want to get Justice Sen's reaction, Justice Hegde, because in, in a sense, two very senior judges, two very different views, and I think that's what we've been seeing the whole last week in the division of the judiciary. A sad day for the judiciary. I asked you also, when you put on your television set that day, what did you feel when you watched this? Did you feel saddened by what happened? Did you think that these four men had a choice? Uh, 
I respect what Justice Hegde says. That's his opinion. He was a very senior judge. He was part of the collegian. Uh, and if I'm not wrong, he was number two in the Supreme Court. So what he's saying uh, must be taken with great weight. Uh, he knows how the, how the collegium functions. But uh, what do you do when there are very, very important issues which are obviously affecting the four other judges of the, of the collegium? What is their recourse? I don't think that they have just on the spur of the moment come out. Uh, and come to the uh, to the media uh, i i think that they had this must have been festering for some time mm -hmm. and they found that there is no that the that one of them was not receptive to the views of the others and then they took this step now of course political parties may, may make it a, a political issue uh, the the media may step in and and start criticizing everybody but uh, you know, on those, there's so many judgments where, or accusations where, we, where a judge has been supposedly defamed. Mm -hmm. Let and, me, and we all say our shoulders are broad enough. Let me just, uh, just set you for bringing the non, non judges on the panel, but let's ask you, uh, Justice Hegde, again, given your seniority, when the allegations that have come out are as serious as the ones that are being made. And as I said, actually, the rumors now are worse than what actually is confirmed fact because there's so much speculation happening across the country. Allegations of bench fixing, allegations of judges being named in a medical admission case and being hushed up. The very allegations themselves are so serious, perhaps transparency is needed to actually clear this all out once and for all? Transparency not outside the um, um, four corners of the Supreme Court. They should have had a full court meeting and they could have discussed that meeting and if the uh, people had still some grievances in regard to bench fixing or, or others, they should have gone to the president. Let me bring in now, let me just bring in Indra Jaising. Indra, you're also a petitioner, you're representing a petitioner in the Justice Loya case, uh, which now Many say is the core of what happened after what uh, Justice Gogoi said at that press conference. What do you think the whole issue really is now going mm -hmm. ahead? Could these issues have really been kept under the carpet? Could there have been another way, mm -hmm. as Justice Hegde said? And as I said, extremely distinguished judicial voices have come out in this week saying what these four uh, senior judges did was wrong. Well, yeah. You've disagreed with that. Why? Okay. So, first of all, um, I did go and attend the press conference myself. Because I felt that this was a moment in history which was not an exact parallel, but a little similar to the moment when three senior judges of the Supreme Court had been superseded and they had resigned. During uh, the emergency. Because the, the, the obvious um, undercurrent was that there was a reason why they resigned. The reason was that... Uh, it was obvious there that three judges were being superseded. But the issue really was, do we know what goes on within the collegium? Do we know whether there is executive interference with the functioning of the judiciary? And to be upfront, I did raise this question at the press conference. I must say I was very disappointed that more of my colleagues practicing lawyers were not there. It was such a rare occasion where we had an opportunity to interact with the judges one-on-one -on -one without depending on rumors. Right. So what I believe is that the press is also one of the most important pillars of democracy. And if at all a message is spread, it is spread through the press. It's part of the right to freedom of speech and expression. So therefore, I believe actually that I'm not saying this should happen every day. I don't think I'll, it will happen for the next 30 years, probably. We waited 34 years mm -hmm. uh, between the supersession and this moment, mm -hmm. which I feel are parallel to each other. It's been that long, so judges obviously don't come out every day. But when you have to, you have to. And uh, it, was a it was done in such a dignified manner. Uh, they didn't say more than what was necessary to be said. They didn't say less than what was necessary to be said. They shared their letter with us. And I must say that I agree with uh, Justice Sen when he says, please don't refer to them as rebels. Even worse, don't refer to this as a mutiny. It is not a mutiny. It is a democratic sharing of information. Now, 
if you want to ask me the question what I think should be done, I actually think that the Supreme Court of India should have a permanent press relations officer, which means is the judges don't have to come and speak to the press every day. And I'm not saying that they should share information of this kind, what's going on. But there is so much that we need to know about the functioning of the Supreme Court in relation to its administrative side. The mm. other thing you must distinguish, please let's understand, I've been saying this again and again, please learn to distinguish between the functioning of the Supreme Court on the judicial side, we don't expect judges to comment on their own judgments. Mm -hmm. You and I are free to comment on their judgments, but the judges are not free to comment on mm -hmm. their judgments. But if a judge comments on the functioning of the administrative side of the Supreme Court, I think that's a very welcome step. In fact, I want to just bring that in because also that point you made at the beginning, Justice saying that we did in fact carry rebel judges, we actually changed that because I agree with you absolutely that this is not about a revolution or a mutiny at all, it's about them raising the concerns they had. But let me bring in Nalin Kohli on that and that's uh, this larger point about uh, referring to Justice H.R. Khanna and the time when these three judges had resigned when they were in a sense that another judge was put in, another committed judge was put in by the then Indira Gandhi government and the whole emergency comparisons with what happened last Friday. How fair or how valid do you think those comparisons are in terms of it being a moment of that significance in the, the independence or if the judiciary actually standing up for what is right? Well, I don't agree at all that that's a fair. I would even dismiss it as, a, as something to compare with. What happened in the emergency was terrible, and we all know about it. This situation is different. Let me stem out a few things that I have, I'd like to say. The first is let's get to the fundamental. The Supreme Court, no less than the Supreme Court, is a critical, essential, extremely sensitive, and critically important institution in our democratic as well as our constitutional scheme. Everyone who comes there, he or she who becomes a judge of the Honorable Supreme Court is an institution individually. When we as advocates stand before a bench, we stand there expecting justice and we don't see them as a junior or a senior judge. Because at that point, you're only addressing a bench and after the Supreme Court, you can only pray to God. And you know, after that question God, if you ever meet with God, mm -hmm. that you know, why didn't I get this judgment this way or what happened? That's the highest, you can't go any higher. Now what my issue is here is that irrespective of this, what, and that's where I disagree with Indra Jai Singh, ma'am, is that, you know, for lawyers to jump in and then to participate in a process and refer to it when you're a part of cases that are being filed by the same lawyers, that's not correct because now we have politicized it. We've brought the judiciary into a lot of question. Two political parties jumped in, the Congress and the left, their leaders. I don't think political parties should have gotten into the first place. It should have been left and it should be left mm -hmm. to the judiciary because that's how we maintain their independence. Let's get to the question of the so-called bench fixing. What is this bench fixing charge? An advocate stands up and I've debated it on other channels and says it shouldn't be heard by this bench but by that bench. Now can that be seen as bench fixing? Because when we see a case go to anyone, it doesn't matter who it is there, that judge is an institution, part of the, great global, uh, the larger institution, the mm -hmm. Supreme Court. Or you say, don't let the Supreme Court hear it, let a Bombay High Court or another High Court hear it. Let's take the case. Now, is that a way, version also of bench fixing? So I'm, I'm worried about the usage of such kind of terms. But uh, Nalan, just to ask that this case is not advocates saying it, it's, it's, it's it, members of the collegium who may raise this. It was an advocate saying it. No, no, one minute. Let me come to it. Let me finish. I have another point to make. Uh, just one last point mm -hmm. on uh, uh, the bench. Let me now look at it from a judge's perspective. And which is in the medical scam, which you are talking about. On a channel, no less than Mr. Prashant Bhushan, who's raised all these questions, admitted and says that I believe that the investigation done by the CBI is fair up to this point, but I'm worried about the future. On what basis that worry if you say that up to this point it is fair? Mm -hmm. Let's look at a judge's perspective if a bail matter is there. On a daily basis, advocates could be saying that I'll fix you this judge judgment, I'll get you the bail. There's a 50% chance that your case may happen your fa in your favor, a case may not happen in your favor. And the poor judge doesn't even know what advocates or others outside are peddling. The, the Honorable Chief Justice is not named in that. Justice Sen mentioned to one order as um, saying uh, appropriate bed. Was Justice Sen referring to, I don't know, if it was to the lawyer uh, case? Mm -hmm. My reading of that is it's not a recusal in that because it said appropriate bench. So we don't know 
whether that is a recusal because it doesn't say so in most cases the recusals are said to be i recuse myself right. or let it go before another bench but in this case <laughs> perhaps that appropriate bench was giving it back to the chief justice in terms of saying you may lordship as the chief justice master of the roster decide which way it should go so i don't know about that case I'm just gonna bring but i don't know if even justice sen was referring i'm just going to bring in justice sen on that nalan just to ask you on that larger point just as uh, justice sen again as somebody who who's been one of the senior most judges of our country do you feel that this was a similar moment to what we described to the justice hr khanna the comparisons that have been made do you feel that this is a similar moment and do you agree because in fact again this has been published pointed out there's a whole thing about senior and junior that the fact is even in earlier governments in the upa governments we've had 2g cases go to a junior judge we've had the bofors case go to junior judges it's not always gone to judges of the collegium at all in fact some of our most high profile cases have not so why is this suddenly become an issue no i don't think i don't think the the situation is the same there i think the the difference is that there the government decided that they were going to make someone the chief justice and the resignations followed thereafter mm -hmm. here it is so there's no emergency like parallel here there's none uh, there's too much being seen that as as far, uh, i clarified right at the beginning if there is any politics in it uh, i i don't want to, uh, to speak on that issue at all but here it is from within the institution that there should be a system which is done and i'm not saying that uh, there was a recusal there mm -hmm. i just said that that was probably the order and the word appropriate is very appropriate <laughs> so what's what's wrong with that uh, again there are so many political undertones <laughs> i'm not concerned with it not i just say that there must be a system in place which should be which should not be violated and which should be violated in only extraordinary circumstances and yes the chief justice has a role and perhaps the the uh, uh, the he's the only person who can deci decide that issue uh, but there what was, was the system in place if there never was a system in place why are we suddenly expecting the system to emerge Well, now they want to make. So, may I just have a quick comment, please? Yes, please. I just said justice and finish, and Alan, I will come back to you. Go ahead. I think I'll... it was justice Hegde. No, it is Alan. Okay, it is Alan. Okay. So, uh, I don't want to see Thank this you. ghost of uh, of politics uh, in in this issue. If the administration of justice can be improved, and these four persons must have agonized. They have said it. Mm -hmm. They have said we don't want the uh, uh, our conscience won't permit us. What? what led them to say that i i am not privy to it nalin uh, you wanted to go ahead then i go back to justice hate because also let's remember that again for these four men justice gogoi in line to be the next chief justice of india yes. coming out like this is not something easy it could put that online who knows what happens next but uh, go ahead nalin what did you want to say well one is i think justice sen had used a very a uh, uh, very appropriate if i may use that term again uh and right at the beginning term by saying requiem i think that's probably the way and the point i'm trying to make is that it's best left for the judiciary and no less than the honorable supreme court and the brother judges all of them to decide what should be done because the minute we are constantly debating on it adding political overtures outside the judiciary it's not good for the institution that's my point the second is dhananjay mahapatra in the times of india and i think it's a phenomenal piece of research when he put out on the front page the in the so called 20 sensitive cases some 14 or 15 were decided by this you know what you may refer as or what's being used by people outside the judiciary as junior ju uh, judges or not so senior judges court age court 11 but they were all important cases mm -hmm. and that was the point i insisted on the beginning that when we stand before a bench we stand before that bench as an institution because each one of them is an institution by themselves we don't see junior or senior so the outside when outside the judiciary people start commenting like this it's a cause of concern for me